Hello students. So today discussion in this video about the chemical properties of carbon. So to discuss about these chemical reactions of carbon, we have to consider its electronic configuration. Yes or no? So what is electronic configuration of carbon? Carbon atomic number is 6. Its electronic configuration is 2s2 2p2. That is a general electronic configuration, ground state configuration. But during bonding, this 2s electrons excited to the empty 2, 2p orbitals and it forms 2s1 2p3 configuration which is called as excited state configuration. Remember, so every time if there is a discussion about the chemical reactivity of carbon, you have to consider excited state configuration only. So when this electron, S electron excites to the empty p orbital, now what is the new configuration? 2s1 2p3. Now each and every orbital is half filled or not? Every, every orbital is occupied by single single, 4 electrons are not students, total 4 electrons are there. So that 4 electrons, having 4 electrons, half filled 4 orbitals, having with 4 electrons is called as tetravalency of carbon. It contains 4 electrons and it, to satisfy the octet rule, it needs more how many electrons? More 4 electrons. So in general, carbon shares its 4 electrons and it achieves the nearest noble gas configuration. So what is the valency of carbon? 4 is the valency. So students, carbon atom has 4 electrons in its valency shell. This in order to satisfy its valency shell, it, it shares its electrons with the neighboring carbon atoms or with other atoms of other elements also. Carbon can share its 4 electrons with other carbon atoms or it can also share with other elements like nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, whatever other sulfur element also. Ultimately, carbon forms a strong covalent bonding only. Carbon, it doesn't lose its 4 electrons or it doesn't gain 4 electrons. Carbon shares all its 4 electrons. That sharing capacity of carbon with 4 electrons is called as tetravalency of carbon. So, valency of carbon is 4. Catenation. So, students, uh, carbon valency is 4. Okay. So, why we have, you know, a, you know like, like many compounds which are made up of carbon. Many compounds, like carbon compounds are unlimited. Infinite number of you know, carbon compounds are many possibilities are there. So why these many compounds are like are possible like plastics, fibers, ointments, um, uh, like uh, cosmetics, many all these are petrochemicals, oils, all these are carbon compounds and even we are also made up of carbon compounds. Trees are also carbon compounds, uh, new vitamins, proteins, nucleic acids. Why all these combinations are possible with carbon? How carbon can behave, can provide that skeleton uh, with com by combining with its own carbon atom as well as with other elements also. The reason is catenation and the reason is tetravalency of carbon. If carbon is tetravalency, this in the same group even silicon also present. Silicon also have tetravalency. No? Sil silicon also has to show this catenation property. But why only you know carbon excel in this uh, you know uh, like producing many compounds. Let us discuss about the catenation first students. Catenation is the self-linking capacity of carbon with other carbons to maximum extent. What is catenation? The self-linking capacity of carbon to other carbons, no limit, infinite to maximum extent. That is called as catenation because of this property only. Carbon can form n number of compounds, unlimited. Many compounds are possible. Is this catenation, is it, is it shown by other elements means? Not, not completely. Some have uh, two or three compounds maximum. That's it. Silicon also has tetravalency. The reason why silicon is not showing catenation like carbon because its configuration. What is carbon's configuration? 2s1, 2p3. Yes, sir. Now, what is silicon's configuration? 3s1, 3p3. But in the third shell, empty d orbitals are there. Yes, sir. No. If there is a space for empty d orbitals, it doesn't provide that much of strength to the bonding. So that's where, you know, the weakness, the weakens is uh, uh, giving and uh, it doesn't produces the strong covalent bonds. If there is no strong covalent bond, does the molecule stable by producing the long form, long chains? No. But for carbon, carbon configuration is 2s1, 2p3. Is there an empty, empty orbital? Are there any empty orbitals there? Is there any space in that, in that second shell? No, absolutely no. All four orbitals are there. Are, uh, all the four orbitals are half filled and all can form bondings with carbons or any other elements. So that is the reason why carbon can form n number of carbons. If two carbons combine, that is one compound. If three combine, that is one more compound. 
If four combined, that's a different compound. Understood, students? So, sir, still carbonolino is there? No. If bonds are different, the completely molecule is different. Not only carbon, they are called as hydrocarbons. Carbons as well as hydrogens are also present, students. That's why these carbon compounds are in general called as hydrocarbons. Not only hydrogens, even oxygens are present nitrogens are also, also present they are called as a specially they are called as a functional groups we have the discussion later so here why this wide variety of these carbon compounds are expected is because of the reason of catenation what is catenation the self-linking capacity of carbon to maximum extent you can see here carbon self-linking capacity means is this linking only happens linearly no even branched also look at look at the first example here carbon bonds to carbon to other carbon you can see other bonds also total how many bonds are there for carbon total four bonds ultimately carbon forms four bonds students to satisfy the four bonds to see all these lines indicates the bonds look at here in the second example carbon total four bonds are uh, completely bonded and look at the down one more carbon and does it ends there no again it continues so this self-linking that means carbon combines with its own carbon uh, element other atoms of carbon in this capacity is called as catenation and this is the reason why do we have the wide variety of compounds coming from this carbon element so and why do we have the other reason is ability to form multiple bonds right multiple bonds means in covalent bond we, we already know we have a single bonds we have a double bonds we have a triple bonds also yes or no for example hydrogen gas one bond is there oxygen gas double bond is there nitrogen gas triple bond is there Similarly, carbon can form all the bonds. In carbon compounds, all the bonds are expected. Single bonds are there, double bonds are there and triple bonds are there. We have a classification of organic compounds also on this category like alkenes, alkenes, alkynes. So we have single bond. What is the meaning of single bond? Between two carbon atoms, there is one bond, one single covalent bond. One single covalent bond is made up of two electrons. One electron from one carbon, another electron from the other carbon. Next, we have a double covalent bond. It contains two bonds. You can see two lines are there now. Two bonds means four electrons. Two from one, two from other carbon. Triple bond also possible, students. Triple bond means three bonds. Three electrons from one carbon, three electrons from the other carbon. Look at what is the valence of carbon? Four. Other electron, it bonds with other hydrogen. You can see. You can check the, the number of hydrogens differ in single bonds, double bonds and triple bonds. Why? Ultimately, they satisfy the tetravalency of carbon. You can check in any example. Total check the number of bonds for carbons. Look at the first case, single bond. How many, how many bonds are there for uh, carbon in this single bonded compound? One, two, three, four. That's it, four bonds. One, two, three, four. Look at this double bonded compound, which is ethylene or ethene. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And look at the triple bonded. 1, 2, 3. And fourth bond with hydrogen. Got the clarity? Ultimately, how many bonds are there? Four bonds are there. That is the tetravalency of carbon. So, to satisfy this valency 4, it can form four single bonds. Or it can form one double bond and two single bonds. Or also it can form one triple bond and one single bond. Got the clarity, students? So that is the ability to form multiple bonds and this is the reason why it exhibit different many compounds. So next isomerism. Isomerism means students it's a process like you know the same having some compounds they have the same composition by the number of atoms but they are different compounds. For example the given example look how many carbons are there let us count how many carbons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 carbons are there. How many hydrogens are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, what is the formula? What is the condensed formula of this compound? C4H10. Yes or no? 4 carbons are there. 10 hydrogens are there. Look at this compound. How many carbons are there? 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, 4 carbons. How many hydrogens? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, what is, what is the formula for this compound? This formula also. What is the formula, students? C4 H10 C4 H10 here also C4 H10 is the formula changing the formula is not changing this is C4 H10 that is also C4 H10 so can we can we say both are same compounds or we have the same composition by atoms no both are not same compounds that's where we got this concept of isomerism maybe they have the same chemical formula but the arrangement of these atoms are different. That's it. They have the same formula, but what is different? The arrangement of the atoms. You can see here, all the four carbons are arranged linearly. But here, 
only three carbons are arranged in the linear chain and one is attached to the middle carbon. So can we, are these both compounds same? No, different. I said clearly. If one bond changes, it produces a completely different compound. Maybe it has same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens, but it's a, they are completely different compounds. One is called as butane, other one is called as isobutane or 2-methyl propane. Completely different compounds. Because of these reasons, even the same number of atoms also, because of this linking, because of this arrangement of atoms, bondings, we have many compounds expected for carbon compounds like, like we consider we have many examples like you know ethyl alcohol and dimethyl ether both have same composition but one is alcohol other one is ether even in isomerism also we have different types also based on based on the chain we have chain isomerism based on the functional group we have functional isomerism based on the position of these func functional groups also we have uh, positional isomerism we have tatamerism like many types of isomerism are also present so next so chemical properties of carbon so these are crucial one students like how do carbon reacts you already in the balance of carbon is four all the allotropic uh, forms of carbon burn in air or oxygen produces carbon dioxide burning of carbon is the main reaction which we rely on our everyday life basis yes or no why do we why we are burning this carbon for energy where is carbon pure carbon are we burning no from coal from petroleum product, products, yes, no, petrochemicals like petrol, diesel, kerosene, all this we are burning. Why we are burning? For energy we are burning. During this burning, what is happening? The carbon present in these petrochemicals reacts with oxygen. That means it burns in presence of oxygen. It produces the respective carbon dioxide which is CO2 gas. Understood students? So that is the burning reaction's main reaction for carbon. So which we depends upon in our everyday life. Carbon is a strong reducing agent. It reduces many metallic oxides to the corresponding metals. So that's what. What is reducing agent? Reducing agent means itself it undergo oxidation. It makes other compound to undergo reduction. <laughs> that is reducing agent. What is reduction? Removal of oxygen or addition of hydrogen is reduction. Yes or no? You can see look at this example. Look at this reaction. Zinc oxide plus carbon. Here we want to synthesize pure zinc. If we want to extract pure zinc. If you add the car carbon, carbon takes that oxygen, yes or no, and uh, leaving the zinc behind and it produces carbon monoxide. So, th this property of oxidizing itself and making the opposite compound un to undergo reduction is called as reducing property because of this reason, you know, the, uh, the purest form of carbon after the, by the distillation of coal is called as coke. It is mainly used as a reducing agent in metallurgical process means for the extraction of all these metals. So the oxides of carbon, what are the oxides of carbon we can expect? Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. So what is carbon monoxide? CO is the formula, very dangerous uh, gas students, carbon monoxide. When this carbon monoxide is produced, students sometimes have you seen uh, from the vehicles, black smoke will come uh, sometimes. Uh, the vehicles which are out of condition, black smoke there we can expect this carbon monoxide you know this carbon monoxide is mainly produced by the incomplete combustion incomplete combustion means combustion reactions means burning of petrochemicals or petroleum products carbon compounds in the presence of sufficient amount of oxygen yes or no c plus o2 gives rise to co2 if there is if there is insufficient amount of oxygen that means two carbons only one oxygen molecule is there two c plus o2 gives rise to do we get CO2? No, we will get two molecules of carbon monoxide there. So during this incomplete combustion, this carbon monoxide is produced, which is a dangerous gas student and uh, it is highly poisonous in nature. One part in 100 parts of the air causes death in few minutes only. The poisonous nature of carbon monoxide is due to the fact it combines with hemoglobin to produce a dangerous thing called as carboxyhemoglobin, which is not cap cap capable to absorb oxygen as a result of this suffocation takes place and gone that's it that's why carbon monoxide is very harmful not only for us by the release of this carbon monoxide into the atmosphere it directly attacks the ozone layer o3 so co plus o3 you know what it produces it produces co2 plus o2 so more stable forms that means have you heard about depletion of ozone layer this is the reason because of carbon monoxide is reacting with ozone it is it is making ozone into o2 oxygen gas sir it is good only in oxygen gas it produces no ozone is gone why why do we need ozone because for the production of 
uv light yes sir students so that is what depletion of ozone layer next there are some uses for this carbon monoxide the use sir it is used as a fuel mostly why because in combination with other chemicals it produces high calorific value it is used as a fuel in the form of water gas which is carbon monoxide and hydrogen and producer gas which is carbon monoxide and nitrogen gas in this combination they produce high calorific value which is used as a fuel it is used in extraction of metals from the metallic oxides as a reducing agent like like i discussed what is a reducing agent the same even carbon monoxide is also used for the extraction of pure metal that means carbon monoxide also has a capacity to take that one more oxygen sir and that's why so next last carbon dioxide what's the formula co2 this is also the most famous chemical carbon dioxide it is present in the atmosphere to the extent of how much 0.03 0.03 3 to 0.4% it is prepared with the burning of carbon in the excess of air with a sufficient amount of air so carbon undergoes combustion and, and produces carbon dioxide so this carbon dioxide also expected by decomposition of carbonates and bicarbonates cacio3 gives rise to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas and calcium bicarbonate also cacio3 plus h2o plus co2 by decomposition of carbon uh, carbonates and bicarbonates also this carbon dioxide gas is produced if this carbon dioxide is ga gas is produced is it is it a good thing or bad thing so to limited amount it is good only why because it traps the heat energy and it makes a, is like little bit warm even during the nights that is good but excess of co2 produces global warming more heat will be you know trapped if more heat will be trapped what happens melting of glaciers will happen so many effects weather conditions weather patterns will change yes, sir no, that is called as global warming so excess anything is dangerous so properties so co2 carbon dioxide it's a colorless gas odorless gas and tasteless gas and slightly soluble in water even carbon dioxide it is also available in the soluble dissolved form in water right so under high pressure it forms a white solid called as dry ice it sublimes and leaves no residue dry ice what is dry ice students solid carbon dioxide is called as dry ice if you order any ice cream you will get you know the ice cubes kind of stuff sir that is not what h2o made, made that is solid carbon dioxide so each which is mainly used for the refrigeration purpose for cooling purpose next co2 is an acidic gas it dissolves in water to form carbonic acid that means students because carbon dioxide all non metallic oxides are acidic oxides they form acidic oxides here carbon dioxide dissolves in water and forms h2co3 which is carbonic acid lime water which is called as calcium hydroxide it turns milky on passing co2 with the formation of insoluble calcium carbonate so this is also one of the test one this is also one of the identification technique identification test for the formation of co2 what is the te technique when co2 is passed through the lime water which is calcium hydroxide it turns milky the milkiness is because of the formation of calcium carbonate next uses uses of carbon dioxide it is used in the manufacture of aerated water and in fire extinguishing yes, sir what is aerated water if the co2 when dissolved in water mostly carbonated drinks yes, sir no that is that is nothing but aerated water or carbonated water in soft drinks we use co2 for that chilling you know effect so and it is used in the fire extinguishing also fire what is fire extinguishing in order to put off the fire to you know stop stop the fire co2 is the best one carbon dioxide the best fire extinguisher we can store under high pressure cylinders so we can easily get that foam of uh, you know co2 which which completely stops the uh, uh, contact of oxygen so that combustion will be stopped so solid co2 is used in refrigeration we already discussed about this point the mixture of co2 and o2 5% and 95% of o2 is called as carbogen mostly used for artificial respiration it is used for artificial respiration in the medicine industry it is used by plants in photosynthesis that is a common thing in photosynthesis carbon dioxide is one of the main thing and it uh, it take plants take carbon dioxide and releases oxygen gas as well as uh, starch so this is what about you know carbon dioxide trends one of the main component from carbon so carbon dioxide is important for our planet earth but excess increasing the levels is very dangerous trends so you know, the coming concepts chemical reactions of carbon we'll discuss in another video that's all for today students thank you